Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we've got a special guest uh, over the Skypes, um, another fellow podcaster, which is always good because we get some damn professionalism in this place, which is always good, and uh, our first ever guest from our nation's capital. It's uh, Holly from Rebel Dispatch. How are you going, Holly? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. No worries, no worries. Now, we were just doing my typical thing before we started we were comparing weather and who had the who was coldest and and you know canberra is traditionally usually a pretty cold place but you seem to be thinking it's all right up there yeah well i haven't got the heater on so that's a start oh geez (laughs) i've I've got like two or three layers but no heater so very good now um we've sort of we interact sort of on social media and things more than sort of anything else as most of these sort of star wars relationships start now I was on my Twitter timeline today, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you watch Star Wars this afternoon? I watched A New Hope. I'm in the middle of a complete rewatch at the moment, so yeah, A New Hope was today's. Oh my God. So, different worlds. Like, I wish I had time to just go, you know what I'm just going to do? I'm just going to go flop down on the couch, I'm going to chuck in A New Hope, and I'm just going to sit here and take it all in. That is, I'm so jealous. (laughs) Yeah, it was nice to just, because I've been like busy with like work and like health stuff and to just sit down for a few hours, it's kind of nice. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. Is that your sort of your go-to or did you say you're in the, you're in the process of a no. sort of a, of an order watch? No, yeah, I'm doing an order rewatch. So I did uh, Rogue One a few days ago, I did Solo about a week ago. So yeah, I'm working my way through. So did you, did you include the include the prequels or are you doing sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah I re- yep. uh, did the prequels. I... um. Because, like, I was a fan, I've only been a fan since, like, The Force Awakens, but I was definitely a part of the prequel generation. Mm-hmm. Yep. So going back and actually, like, re-watching them as a fan is kind of fun. Yeah. Well, like, we, I, I, I... Love, I love The Phantom Menace and the other two I'm a bit indifferent about, but yeah, it's yep. interesting to see how your opinions change as you become a fan. Yeah, that's interesting because actual... obviously, yeah, because yeah, you've, like, you know, you don't have any skin in the game as like a kid who got into them when you were a little kid or anything. Like most sort of prequel kids, you know, that's their jam because that's their first Star Wars. Like you actually, you know, got into it on Force Awakens and then went back objectively. Yeah, yeah. Like I definitely remember because my brothers, well, at least one of my brothers were a fan growing up, whereas I got put with, like I, I loved being a Harry Potter fan, but Star Wars was always kind of like the boy thing. Mm. But I've definitely got a pretty clear memory of watching The Phantom Menace several times as a kid. Because uh, okay, it, okay. it was my brother's favorite at the time. So. Yep. Yep. Well, I just did a, a commentary track with uh, our friends at that Geek Pod last weekend. I think that's just come out, actually. And we sat down, we did a commentary track for The Phantom Menace. And, um, oh, nice. Yeah. It was, I really enjoyed it. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I sat through it from start to finish. Like, it always kind of, it's sort of on TV every now and then. You kind of flick through and then, you you know, you fall down the rabbit hole and end up yeah. watching it. But you know, these days with stuff like streaming or, or you know, get the DVD, you got to like physically go to the shelf, get the DVD out, put it in, you know, yeah. really commit your time. Yeah, <laughs> um, get but, up off the couch. And... Yeah, get up off the couch because I have nothing of. So it was quite nice to, um, to, yeah, just to sort of pop it in and watch it. And yeah, I had a good old time actually. It was um, some of the special effects didn't hold up as well as I remember, but I don't really care about stuff yeah. like that. I, I just sort of got carried away with the story. I, I, <laughs> I got caught up on a, on a Darth Maul rant, but apart from that, I think <laughs> I was all right. I just, <laughs> I found out this whole, this whole thing of like, what was the purpose of Darth Maul even being there? He doesn't really do anything. He doesn't really help Palpatine's plans or anything like that. No. And for some reason, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I found, I found it interesting watching, especially the Phantom Menace now, like, Knowing that Palpatine's going to be back in the Rise of Skywalker in some form, sort of mm. like going back and looking how he's impacted the story from day one. Yeah, it's it, it's one of the the, the better master strokes, strokes of George Lucas, the way he sort of wove him into the story. Like I, I, you know, he always claims it's all sort of completely planned out, but I feel like he sort of retconned the Emperor very well into that sort of into that story and all the moves he makes and things but i just kind of felt that the, his whole plan is you know he's got to get this vote of no confidence so he can run for chancellor and um darth maul just seems like excess he doesn't really seem to have any purpose by like why why bother bringing him in but i don't know he looks cool yeah that's pretty much like i 
was pretty indifferent about Darth Maul up until I started playing Battlefront 2. Oh. And he's one of my favourite characters to play. So I actually quite enjoy him at the moment. <laughs> but purely yeah. because he looks cool. That's pretty yeah. much it. Oh, look, he's cool. Don't get me wrong. I... um. You know, I I bent over backwards to get his um his exclusive figure at celebration this year. You know, to make sure that uh, I could yep, get it. Yep. And um, you know, I didn't I didn't get a lot or anything. I had to sort of maneuver the line and talk to people about what's the best time to turn up to try and snag one of these. And I managed to get them. So he's he's got pride of place on my shelf right now. I'm looking over at him right now. So you know, I've always got time for Darth Maul. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you at celebration this year? Yes, I was. Yeah, I Did definitely. We, I, it was I, my first ever one. Yeah. I have this sort of weird recollection that we we cross paths, but I'm just not a hundred percent sure. Um, it's hard to say because you meet so many people at celebration. Yeah. Um, and yeah, especially I was when you there. when you meet other Australians and stuff, you always kind of go, yeah. ooh, ooh, you know, because we we had a little posse of Australians, and then it was always funny running into other Australians. You're like, oh, I don't know you, other Australian person. I thought I it's knew everybody. Just- yeah, it's like an experience I have every time I'm over in the states. I always because especially because I always end up especially like more in like California. You run into so many Australians. It's just like <laughs> we always find each other when we're overseas. Oh, man. I lived in England for 10 years and it was just sort of like, oh, oh no. God, embarrassing Australians on the tube. Just keep your head down. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look. There's some Queenslanders here. Um, oh, no. So did you did you um, snag tickets to Anaheim? Yes. I um, got up at 2 o'clock. Yeah. That was the play, and, wasn't um, it? <laughs> yeah. Waited in that magical line for about... I think I ended up waiting about 15 minutes to get my ticket. Yeah, I didn't wait that long either, actually. I think I, I sort of got up at sort of 5-2 and jumped up and I sort of opened two browser windows and I was like, all right, whoever gets here first is the winner. And, um, yeah, I think I was – I think that my receipt – I could probably find it now, but it was about sort of completed, sort of got emailed to me at about quarter past two. So yeah. The process was quite good, but then I had um, we had the sort of crew who went last time. We're on this little Facebook group. We've been talking about all the things, and you know, people are going, "I got oh, a thing. I'm on a line." And has anybody got one? You know, all the sort of the panic text messages are all sort of running at two in the morning, and everybody's up. But um, I was just very happy that everybody I knew got one, which was good after, especially yeah. after sort of the. It's just crazy how it sold out. I mean, do you? What do you think it is? Like, why? Why all of a sudden has this thing just become so hot? Well, like I. I do wonder if maybe they've just got less tickets in general, but I have also seen people saying, like, because it's in Anaheim, you've got, like, all the Disney people there and all, like, the casual fans who will come yep. out for conventions and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. But, that, but that, yeah, like... for it to be sold out so quickly was a bit of a surprise because, yeah, I've got friends who, like, where I'm in an R in and, like, they've got maybe, like, one day, but now that most of the days are sold out, they're just like, well, What's the point? I guess we'll have to wait and see because yeah. there will be like tickets resold, but well, I think so quick. yeah, well, I think that's got a lot to do with it because I sort of had a couple of people on here, a couple of people have been on um, David Strutt and Jess Schrader and people like that who we met at Celebration, and they were sort of talking about, oh, I'd like to go, and hopefully I can figure it out, and and I just said to them, I think I sent the post, I said, look, just get on, get your ticket, okay? Don't you know you can don't, don't worry about anything else, just make sure you've got your tickets. You can always exchange them or return them and sell them through the exchange thing. So I think that because they've got this exchange thing now that people are just going, I'll just get them and then I'll worry yeah. about the rest later. And then I can always sell them on later on and you know get my money back and, and, and move them on. But I just want to have the peace of mind of knowing that I've gotten them. And I, I think that, because I don't know whether they've had that exchange thing previous times because it's never sold out as much. But I think people yeah. are like, I'm just going to get it. And then if it doesn't work out, I can worry about that later. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm definitely aiming to go, but, like, I'm also, like, something could come up where, like, it doesn't allow me to, but at least yeah. now I've got that ticket. Yeah, so the peace of mind is more going, well, like, if it's a problem, it'll be a problem when it's a problem, otherwise yeah, I'm good exactly. to go. Rather than going, oh, I slept in, I got up, and now I can't even, no, I have to wait and see if I can get one closer to and stress about it yeah. for all this time, hoping that's going to happen. So. Well, I mean, like, thankfully it is in Anaheim as well, which I just find generally a lot easier to get to purely because we can just go straight to LA. Yeah. That's massive as well. I, I don't know yeah. about you, but I had to fly you know, LA and then get out the, you know, go through immigration at LA, get, get on another plane to Chicago for another sort of six hours. And yeah, I was up for a you know, wait for a long time. <laughs> like I've, I've been lucky enough to travel to the US a few times and I've spent like a year living over there. So I knew, I knew flying directly, well, directly to Chicago was just going to suck. 
Yeah. So I made sure to plan like a few days in Anaheim before that. So I did. Oh, a few right, days you took a few days, days, right? <laughs> yeah. So I did a few days in Disney beforehand. Ah, oh, doing then it tough. Out to Chicago. Yeah, and then um, flew out to San Francisco for two days on the way out. So it was like a Star Wars sort of like pilgrimage. Oh, right. So you were in sites. San Francisco for two days. Because yeah. I was in San Francisco as well for two day, for yeah, three days I after. Think, I remember seeing, I think you may have visited the Yoda Fountain like the day after I did or oh, something. Oh, if only we'd known. Yeah. See, this is, the, yeah. this is the problem with the internet. Sometimes you, you, you make your internet friends a little bit too late. So that's, yeah. that's a bummer because you could have hung with, because Catherine from That Geek Pod was there as well. And we, we were hung out nice. in there and we did... Uh, we did the Yoda fountain and we did sort of the touristy stuff and you know cruised around. It was um, it was very cool. Got to go inside Lucasfilm as well. Yeah. Did you go inside? I went inside that foyer and um, yep. had a look down the hallway and kind Kennedy. of wish I could just walk down there. But I said hi, I'm um, Holly from uh, Rebel Dispatch. I'm here to see Kathy Kennedy, please. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Holly, <laughs> yep. my women. name should just yeah. my name should just be there. Well, this must be some kind of terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, like, I remember the day I was there as well, they had a group of what must have been, like, preschoolers from the on-site preschool. They came up all on, like, one of those kitty leashes. Oh, I think I saw them. And they, yeah, they walked up to the Yoda fountain and the teacher goes, what do we say to Mr. Yoda? And they're just like, hello, Mr. Yoda. Thank like, you they for said our, hello well, to our, the for our livelihood. <laughs> yeah, it was just the cutest thing. And, like, Aww. what a cool life these kids must have, like. Going to preschool at Star Wars. I know. Time. I know. It's wasted on them, really, to be honest. But anyway, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, we the wrong of... people to be jealous of, really. Yeah, I know. I know. We kept making jokes of, you know, looking at sort of places nearby, that, like the pizza joint, going, I wonder if that's Kath- where Kathy Kennedy gets her pizzas <laughs> from. And uh, you know, we just see her in there having a sandwich or something like that. But um, it's be- absolutely beautiful, isn't it? The, what a place to uh, work. The, uh, like, I knew it was a nice campus but like when you're actually there and especially like the day i was there the sun was shining the temperature was perfect like i stayed in a hotel that was like a couple of hundred meters down the road from it deliberately yeah i could just like officially walk up and it was just amazing like the creative energy they must get from just being in that location oh yeah it's amazing I think on the tour bus, so we did like the old tour bus San Francisco uh, thing and they yeah. sort of did a bit on it and they were like, oh, yeah, this used to be like a military hospital or something and then George Lucas just bought all the land and knocked it down but then built all the buildings so they looked the same and, yeah, huh. it's quite an interesting sort of history of the, the area of, of what it was before and, you know, yeah. Uncle, Uncle George just wanted to have his little headquarters and things. It's it's a pretty fancy part of town all around there, really. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I checked out the Disney Museum, which was down the road from that as well. Oh, where was that? I didn't even know that was there. So it was like a couple hundred meters walk, like towards the Golden Gate Bridge. Ah, oh, just like the it. Disney Family Museum. <laughs> oh well, I blew that. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun little place as well, but it was just kind of surreal walking around the entire area and then walking down to the um, Palace of the Fine Arts. Yep. Which is like what inspired Naboo. So I'm just, I was walking around and being like, oh, I'm in Naboo. I love Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having, it just was great. Naboo. Just keeping yeah. the Star Wars party, you know, you don't want it to end really after celebration, do you? You sort of just want it to keep, was, it, keep yeah. on rolling on. Keep it going. So what was your um, your highlight for, how'd you go for panels at celebration? Did you have any luck? Um, no. <laughs> I got, so we got an overflow room for the Rise of Skywalker. We ended yep. up in, well, we were meant to be in the smallest overflow room, but then my friend Chris and I, we walked down there and they were just like, oh no, you can go up to the bigger overflow room. And we we're just like, oh, okay. So we ended up in the, uh, what, well, yeah, the galaxy stage. Yeah. Yep. yep. And um, that was amazing. Like I've never watched a trailer with other fans before. Yep. So that in itself was amazing. And then the panel went so much better than I honestly anticipated it going. <laughs> so I just had so much fun with it. It was just just amazing. And then, yeah, just meeting all these people I've been speaking to for like more than a year online was really, really nice. So did you know your, like a- have you spent time with your co-host, is it Manda, bef- like yes. before? Wasn't the first time? Because if we had, a, we had friends of ours who had podcasts and they were meeting their co-hosts for the first time. Our friends, Emily Lind and um, Brittany Brown from Canada Byte Dispatch had never met in person before until celebration. So, yeah, we, uh, um, yeah, we hadn't met before. So. Oh, you hadn't? 
No. So how was that? We'd only talked online. Oh, that was great. We kind of, I mean, like I've, I've met other like online friends from other fandoms before. So I'm actually, I'm kind of used to it in a way. Yep. You know, so I didn't fun. find it weird, but um, it's just a, it is kind of an odd experience. Like if I'm not <laughs> actually visualizing this, like I think the visualizing is probably yep. the biggest bit, like, Oh, someone's taller than I thought, or someone's shorter. Like that can really <laughs> throw me off. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because you did get it because I had um, friends, sort of online and friends and things. And I consciously sort of tried to get people on the podcast before um, people I knew that I wanted to hang around with and spend time with before celebration, just to sort of you know get a even better idea of, uh, and talk to them a little bit more, and make it a bit more personable and things. And it's funny when you listen to podcasts. A lot of the times when your friends are on, you, you get a pretty good idea of their personality anyway. You know, there wasn't any sort of shocking revelations about people that I had once they were in person. They're pretty much exactly as I remembered. But like you said, some people are taller and shorter. Yeah. Or, you know, more handsome or, you know, in the case of like Eric Struthers <laughs> or someone like that. But, uh, you know, it's beautiful yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, Actually, so you- what someone who I was quite disoriented by was um, the lovely Claire from, Imp- from Imperial Senate. Oh, the Queen of Chicago. Yes. <laughs> Seeing her in person was... Um... Is she smaller in person? Yeah, she's got pint size. Adorably sober. So it's like, oh, you're shorter than me. <laughs> yeah, she was good fun, Claire. She um, yeah. she was she was one of the people we had on the show before uh, before celebration and things. And yeah, I think she was she was equally pumped and terrified about having it in her hometown that, you know, it was great. Yeah. But it was sort of, whew, this is a lot. There's, a, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, Star Wars and a lot of people all here going again, but um, yeah, look, I'm I, I can't wait for next year. It's um, it's crazy to think that the the brain sort of just ticks over to start sort of counting down all over again. I think, but um, yeah, like I'm I'm not entirely re- like it feels so soon. I was ready to have like a two year gap, mm-hmm. but I'm I guess I'll like I'm I am happy that it's a bit later in the year, like August. Yeah, August I think is so too. August is good. Nothing's going on here in August anyway. It's cold. <laughs> I'll take a trip to I'll take a trip to California any day. So I sort of um you know, even when I got back, sort of the day after I got back, um, you know, back with my family and my partner and everything and I just said, Oh, you know, they're gonna do it all again next year in Anaheim and my partner cat was like, All right, well, that should be okay. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of floated it as soon as I got back just to just to sow the seeds and things. But um yeah. she's been really good actually. I think she's sort of going Oh, this is the, the thing that you do, you know. You, yeah, you, you're, you're full time dadding it the rest of the time. You can have a little week with your nerdy friends and and, and come back. We'll survive without you. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to bring up a, a topic, and uh, which is sort of, you know, when when you you get people on and we've interacted a bit online and things, and you sort of see what people are about on on you know on the socials and what kind of Star Wars they like and things, and um. I want to talk about shipping, Holly. Yes. <laughs> now, I'm I'm not a shipper, but I mm-hmm. respect the ship. I uh, I people can ship ship what they like, ship what they don't. You know, go go for it. I I, I I'm all for it. Um, do you are you a Star Wars shipper only, or do you? Cro- it sounds like you have a few fandom loves. No, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like I've been uh, like I've had a couple of fandoms like, throughout the years, and, like, Harry Potter was, like, my big one Mm -hmm. for so long. And I did have sort of my two main ships there. And then, like, there's been, like, being a very, like, being a teenager in, like, the 2000s, I had my crime shows I watched. Yep. Like, NCIS and Bones and all of that. And, yeah, like, I seem to gravitate. There will always be one pairing that I gravitate to in sort of, like, any media I consume. Yep. So I've had so, my fair share of ships, yeah. <laughs> so I'm a repeat shipper. Um, yeah. So do you, like, in the case of Harry Potter, I know Potter reasonably well. Um, yeah. Do, do you go for the sort of like the ones that look like the plot is going that way or are you more like I want these two things that don't, you know, in my head work but don't necessarily, I know will probably not end up that way. You know, do you uh, kind of go, oh, yeah. I'm, the, I'm about Ron and Hermione or you're more like, no, I want, you know, Harry and, and um, Draco or I want, you know, do you tend to sort of gravitate to sort of the less, con- not conventional, but no. the, the ones that it seems the plot isn't going that way? No, I'm very much a sort of like vanilla canon shipper. Like I need, <laughs> I, need I need the material to ship them. Like, yeah. 
barring like a few exceptions, I generally ship things that will or are canon. Okay. Okay. So, um, in the case of Star Wars, <laughs> what's your what's your Star Wars jam? Finn and Poe are like my number one. Ah, I don't suppose you listened to our last week's episode when we had Dale. I did. (laughs) So it's a crazy coincidence. I didn't plan to have you on. I mean, I've I've sort of thought about having you on anyway, but you'd sort of gone public and said, hey, if anyone wants, you know, be on a podcast. I was like, oh, yes. You know, she's cool. I'll get her on. But that's just a coincidence that we had Dale and Dale on last week, and he was talking a bit of Finn and Poe as well. Um, So I won't repeat everything. We went in there and had nauseam, but... um, what do you do? You think it could happen? Do you think you could sit in Rise of Skywalker and 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 it would actually be sort of cemented? Um. See, I'm always going to have like a tiny, tiny bit of hope, regardless of what happens. Yep. Like, like all things being equal, looking at what we've got, I think there is a chance. But then all things are not equal. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> they're still a gay ship. So, yep. Like, as much as Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm talk about Star Wars being for everyone, they're not... The evidence isn't quite there on the yeah. screen yet. Yeah, it's, especially the, for, like, free well, it's representation. it's not on the screen, not but... quite there. Yeah, it, no. It's just not on the screen yet. It's not there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah, I think there is a chance. It's just whether or not they take it. And I, as much as I want to think they will, I don't think they will. Um, if they don't, would you prefer it to be left ambivalent rather than... Def, you know, rather than, you know, Finn with Rose at the end of the film or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, would, would you rather oh, sort of yeah. d- dangling threads where you can sort of do your own headcanon or go, hey, maybe they'll do a Finn series later on or something or... Yeah, I'm definitely, like, my ideal, like, my realistic ideal sort of, like, ending would be no romance at all, really, and which, because to me, that sort of leaves the door open mm-hmm. for Finn yeah. and Poe and, like, knowing how Oscar and John and especially Oscar sort of like act and how they sort of like really Play do up. like that pairing. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. If the doll's left open, then I think there's very clearly a route to take that ship and make it canon outside yep. of the movies. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if it was in the movies, obviously, especially for, for you know, for people who really want to see themselves represented a bit more, you know, have it just right there, no two ways about it and things. But I guess, like you said, if it sort of leaves the door ajar, a bit later on and you can sort of do those characters but um so you don't you don't sort of the Raylo stuff doesn't really interest you you're a bit like ah oh, whatever everyone goes down the Raylo path or is it just um, a secondary is it sort of a are you a one ship woman or is it sort of like oh i can yeah. sort of <laughs> i admittedly have strong opinions about Raylo and then generally not positive like it's just yep. not my thing at all yep um i have issues with it but at the end of the day we'll just see how they take it like, yeah. I, I love the dynamic between Ray and Kylo. I think it's incredibly interesting. I just don't like it. I find it more when interesting it's on a sort of... Yeah, I find it more interesting on sort of a... I don't want to say professional level, but I guess professional. You know, as an adversarial level more than... Yeah. Anything, rather than, like, you know, boy meets girl kind of thing. I, I, I just kind of feel like, in the case of those two, that it does it wouldn't feel very earned at the end of them, if they sort of all of a sudden were together or something happened, you know what I mean? Like it feels like they haven't taken that journey. The journey is a bit different. It's more of a, yeah, yeah. an adversarial thing, but I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll see. Yeah, it, it's just, yeah, it's, and I have issue with like if they were to make that canon and that ship, no wonder, like no, like regardless of how you look at it, there are, I think, maybe controversial parts of it or issues with it. Mm-hmm. And if like that pairing were made canon while they still don't have like a queer character or pairing, that to me just it rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Are there any but that's just me. Are there any I can't think of any off the top of my head. I don't know whether you know more just because this is sort of stuff that you guys talk about more on your pod. How many are there any major Star Wars characters who are out and out? Are there I just can't any actors, sorry, not characters. Yeah. Um, so the one and only um, is Aaron Kellyman, who plays uh, my dear um, Emphis Nest. Emphis Nest, of course. Yes. Oh, because she had the photos at, at the Pride Parade thing, didn't she? Yeah, and then at Pride and then I think with her girlfriend as well. So, right. yeah, she, as far as we know, is the only, like, out Did you actress, get a photo with her at Celebration? I did, and did it made have, my day. I, I had a friend, our friend, 
or my friend or our friend or everyone's friend uh eric struthers he got a photo with her as well and said that she had a a, a friend or somebody who was hanging around with her or not. i don't know whether that was the same woman in the photo or not or uh did she yeah, have sure. somebody who was with her when you got the photo? It sort of all it all happens pretty quick, doesn't it? Really, uh, they everyone was saying, "Oh yeah, they rush you through the photo, they rush you," and it's like, oh, okay. And then yeah, they really do. <laughs> like she was still lovely in those like ten seconds, but you do. It's just like go, go, go. Yep. Um, and if yeah, anybody doesn't, if anybody hasn't seen a photo of Holly, she's you've got a bit of sorry, Aaron Kellerman hair hairstyle sisters, aren't you? Really, you've got the, yeah. The... She, actually, because she, I walked up to her and she's just like, "Oh, we've got the same hair," and it's like, "Oh, you spoke to me." <laughs> <laughs> it made my yeah, it was yeah. I made sure to make sure my hair was like perfect that day as well. Uh, that's exactly what Eric Struthers did. He bloody wouldn't wear the <laughs> beanie I gave him because he was like, yeah. "No, nah, man, I got to make sure my hair is perfect for Aaron Kellerman." I yeah. you're missing that. And then he's like, she said, my hair was neat. And, you know, so <laughs> there's my Eric Struthers impression that I haven't busted out for a while. Um, yeah, everybody was very conscious about having very good hair around her. <laughs> yeah. Well, hers is so amazing. Like, you have to, like, step up to her level. Well, my um, my daughter, Olive, who is nearly four, she's got curly hair. And we were watching, um, she's been watching the Galaxy of Adventures cartoons on Star Wars Kids, the little cartoon oh, nice. ones. And there's a solo one that came out quite recently, and it's sort of young solo. And they do these little clips and things that they show. Infus Nest is in there, so she's. I think it's the bit where it's sort of like you'll come back, you'll you'll join the rebellion. You might not do it now, but you know you're a good dude de- deep down. Um, and she just goes, "Oh, who's that?" And I said, "Oh, that's Infus Nest." And then I showed a picture of a picture of um, Ari Kellerman, you know, in costume rather than the, the, the photo. And she just goes, "Oh, she's got curly hair like me." Oh. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, wow, there you go." Yeah, well, so, that was basically like my reaction watching Solo when she took her helmet off. I was just like, "Huh, oh, like she's got the same hair." Like first curly haired person in Star Wars. Who yeah. else has got curly hair in Star Wars? Anyone? Oh. oh. Well, I guess Val sort of had, but they killed yeah. her off before we could really see it. So yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah. certainly not in the OGs, I don't think. No. Oh, there you go. But um. All right, well, hopefully we'll see more of Infus Nest. You know, I think that's, uh, I mean, would you, I guess that's an opportunity to have a, a queer character with Infus Nest, I suppose, if the actor, oh, yeah. you know, it seems that seems like a, pretty of a, a bit of a, uh, I would say an easier one. You know, that would probably be an easier sell having the actor already be queer and yeah. you know, sort of, have, she's got a pretty mysterious background still. You could probably bring that, put that in pretty easily without people getting their knickers in a bunch about changing characters or anything. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I guess she's sort of, I still haven't read any of the Afro stuff, but I guess she's sort of in a similar vein to Afro in that she's, like, not like a, like, she's very definitely a hero, but she's not like a clean-cut sort yeah. of, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've read, the, Afri- I've read the, and... the Afro comics. In fact, I read one today. And, um, yeah, she's sort of, Afro's sort of, you know, not really popular with the Empire, not really popular with the Rebels, just sort of, you know, walks to the beat of her own drum gets into scrapes and things and um yeah she's a really good character and she's got a sort of on again off again thing with an imperial officer but um actually who's defected to the rebels spoilers but uh you know hmm. it's uh it's a good read yeah and it's just you know they just talk about you know they make jokes about like oh yeah your girl your girlfriend came and brought you in and da 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 and it's all just sort of you know front and center which is uh yeah the way it should be but um yeah do you, do you think we'll get a solo too where do you, where do you um where'd you land on solo do you want to see a I, solo too for emphasis and nothing else or you kind of like uh oh, give her her own thing well i i'm kind of like either i'm kind of back back and forward with solo like the actual story i think would have worked better as a tv show mm-hmm. and then i've got Again, issues with how they handled Val and then issues, like many issues with how they handled Lando's sexuality. So I've got a few and L3, I, yeah, how they handled her bothers me a lot. But on the other, on the other hand, like I love Emphis and I love Kira. So I think those two have stories that I would be definitely invested in going forward. Have, have you seen um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge and anything else apart from Solo? Have you seen Fleabag? No. I haven't. I um listening to your episode where you talked about it. I um 
Yeah, I'll have to look into it. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of go, oh, she's just she's such a great writer, and she was perfectly fine in Solo. But you just go, oh man, like she could give her a Star Wars script, and she could really, you know, it's sort of go. Oh, it's a bit of a shame that she sort of hid behind a, a robot. There's only so much expressionism you can ex- how yeah. expressive you can be with a big robot head on. But um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of funny that she is so good at what she does with her own stuff that she would even want to do Star Wars. But I guess you know when Star Wars comes knocking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, as we're seeing, people will take any opportunity to be in the Star Wars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter how famous they are, what they'll take whatever they get, like. Yeah, I look, I, you know, if they called me, I'd, I'd find a way. Yeah. And I, <laughs> they started filming them in England about a year after I left, unfortunately, oh, which no. was really annoying. And then my um, one of my close friends in London, who's been on a, one of the early episodes we had, she uh, does work with Lucasfilm. So she... Oh. Um, she works for the British Film Institute and she helps get sort of diversity onto onto film sets in Britain. And oh, nice. um, and Lucasfilm came calling. Kathy Kennedy wanted to use the program. So they were sort of used her to, to get sort of people from different backgrounds and genders and, and so on onto film sets because I think it's a bit of a who you know normally. Yeah, definitely. So she oh, sent awesome. me, yeah, she sent me photos going, hey, I'm at the rise, of, I'm at the, well, at the time it was episode, I'm at the episode nine rap party. I'm like, well, <laughs> lucky you. So I'm sure yeah. in, in a few months I'll get a thing like, hey, I'm at the episode nine, the Rise of Skywalker, you, like European premiere or something like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I, a few of photos from that um, rap party leaked and it looked pretty awesome. Yeah, she said it was pretty awesome. She goes, I can't really say anything apart from what you've seen in the photos, but <laughs> yeah. it was, you know, yeah. I'm like, uh, and I felt bad because I, I got it. I found out she had the job and, and I had just, I hadn't really done much of the podcast. And I said, please come on and talk about it. And she was very conscious because she'd signed like the Lucasfilm NDA, like the big oh, like, the Bible. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And she was a bit like, oh, don't put my name on and uh, don't do this. And oh, I'm really, you know, and yeah. So I, I felt bad, but I, she still got the job. So I, I, you know, nobody, nobody listened to the podcast. And she didn't say anything. She was very conscious not to sort of give anything away about what she did. But um, yeah. But uh, yeah, lucky her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, lucky definitely. her, unlucky me. Um, yeah. So, Rise of Skywalker. What um, a- apart from the uh, the big ship, ship, ship and the ship and the boys. What else are you um, hoping to see? Especially now that you're sort of you're running through these films. Like, yeah. where do you think where do you think it's going? Do you have? I mean, we don't really. I, you don't do spoilers, I assume. Um, I did. Not so much spoilers as, like, leaked photos when they were oh, filming. Okay. So, yeah. like, the shot of um, – the shot we see of um, Finn, Poe, and Ray like, looking out to the um, rooms of the Death Star. Yep. I, um, I remember seeing the photos of Finn and Poe in, like, August of last year. Okay. Okay, which so, seems yeah. like a massive deal at the time. You know, like, yeah. I, I was like, no, no, I can't watch, I can't look at anything. And then, of course, you see a trailer, like, oh, they're just standing in the grass somewhere. Yeah, but now I'm definitely just like, I don't want to hear anything. Like, because a lot of a lot of the stuff that coming is coming through is going to be fake, but yep. some of it could be real, and you never know. And that's what kind of stresses me a bit. Yeah, like I don't want any major, like I don't want to know any like shipping stuff. I don't want to know any major plot points. Like, I just want to go in as free as possible. Yeah, well, well, that's the same here. Like, I, I, I'll watch the trailers, and then I don't even watch the TV spots closer to because they just start putting too much stuff in, really. But uh, yeah, I tell uh, myself I won't watch them, and then I do. With and then you, do, you can't help yeah. yourself. Um, so just. You know, purely speculative, speculation and speculative and things like. What do you, what do you sort of feel? Where do you feel like the story is going? Do you sort of have an I, inkling one way or another? I, I still feel that. I feel like maybe Ray and Kylie will have to team up to destroy Palpatine in whatever way he's sort of manifested. Mm-hmm. And I still feel like for it, like for for him to finally be destroyed and for the story to end properly that Kyle or Ben or whatever you want to call him is going to have to sacrifice himself in some way. Like he may, like, I feel like maybe the way he redeem himself is to sacrifice himself. So you're, you're thinking Ben Demption is on the cards. I personally don't really want it, but <laughs> he's, like, he's got to pay. It, but yeah, it, like to me, the most satisfying way would be for him to 
sort of like assist the resistance and assist Ray in finally defeating Palpatine. Mm-hmm. And that may come at like the cost the of his life. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty common, a common thread. And I, I, t- I don't know, I guess th- the sort of assumption is, I guess, because it's sort of JJ Abrams, you, you're sort of inclined to think that he'll play a bit safer and that, the, you know, these things are probably likely going to happen. Whereas, you know, if it was Ryan Johnson, you're going, well, after the last one, mate, who knows what yeah. you're cooking Who knows you know, what? Who knows what's going to happen? It could be Kylo could be killed in the first five minutes for all. You know, it could just be something wacky. But I, I guess you sort of feel like, oh, well, J.J. Abrams tends to play safer. Um, yeah. I guess because you're also wrapping up, you're kind of like, well, if you're wrapping this big thing up, you know, like good has to defeat evil, um, you know, all that kind of stuff has to sort of happen. But. So the sort of the, the the who, the what, the how, and the why, and all that kind of stuff starts to play a bit of a, a part in it. Yeah, like at the end of the day, all I really want is for the trio to survive and to be happy, and for the be- and for them for there to be like a big celebration sort of scene at the end. Dancing Ewoks and bonfires yeah. and like because to me that final scene in Return of the Jedi is like. Star Wars makes me happy in a lot of different ways, but that scene is like happiness, <laughs> like pure happiness to me. Do you do you subscribe to the theory that it's it's a diminished, you know, given to what happens to the characters later on, or you just like, hey, it's all about the moment. No. Doesn't I mean, make that's, any difference. I mean, that's life, really. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> One minute you're dancing around a bonfire, the next minute you've you know getting stabbed on a ledge and falling down a hole or something. It's. Uh... I mean, like they still had thirty good years as well, so. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There's plenty of uh, uh, wacky adventures that they can have in that time. That uh, you know, they're probably pretty good. They'll probably go through all the, all the, um, you know, Luke will go to the dark side a couple of times, like he does in all those yeah. books and things, and <laughs> come back and all the things that people insist that they they need to see. But um, yeah, um, what what's your um, your premiere look like? What what's your sort of Star Wars new movie routine? Do you, do you sort of have a little crew? No, I don't actually, because I don't actually have many, like, friends in real life who are Star Wars fans. Oh, no. So, um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm very much a do-my-own-thing with movies, but um, I don't have a set plan as of yet. Like, with The Last Jedi, I was lucky enough, um, because I was back home then, I went to the midnight premiere with some work friends. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, now being down in Canberra, I'm still like tossing up whether I'll be home for Christmas because it's already like it's like less than a week out from Christmas. So where's where's home when you saw uh, Cross Harbour? Oh, the North Coast, yeah, on the coast, yeah, no, yeah. beautiful. So yeah, whether or not I'll do it up there or do it down here in Canberra or maybe just like go to Sydney and go to like the big cinema there. Yep. Like I'm Make still was... tossing up a few options. Yeah, so you're sort of like I've got to go at midnight. I can't risk oh, no, going no. any later. No. I mean, we're lucky that, you know, Australia now, we kind of get it before most people now. So it's sort of back in my day when I was when I was younger, you know, we we, would, we got Phantom Menace two or three weeks after it came out in America. And you had to, I mean, it wasn't yeah. the same because there wasn't, you know, there was the internet, but it wasn't sort of like social media and stuff. It was pretty easy to, to not find out what happens if you really wanted to. But yeah, it's hard enough just that last day or two before yeah, you know, after, yeah. the, after the premiere and you're just kind of like, oh, I've just got to stay off everything and just yeah. not, you know, muting words and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, from like memory with The Last Jedi, I think like I logged off Facebook like a week or two before and then I muted a heap of words on Twitter. And then I think in like the last week before the movie, I just deleted Twitter off my phone. <laughs> just in case it, it became sentient and started sending you things without you. Yeah, because like to me, like I didn't, my big thing was I didn't want to see any of like if the soundtrack got, if the soundtrack listing got leaked, I didn't want to see any of the titles for that. Yeah. Because I know they can be huge spoilers. So I just didn't want to risk anything. Yeah, I remember sort of, um, for Last Jedi going like, Luke, Leia, Kylo, dead, death, force, <laughs> ghost. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, all if these I could words. just mute, ev- like, if I can mute just mute all. every single Star Wars word <laughs> in the month of December, I'll be happy. But otherwise, like, because, like, it's not like I can just go off social media for the month of December. Like, I can, like I've got to- my friends on here. Like, I've got my podcast, which, like, we're going to have to keep 
like we'll be busy in December. Yeah, no matter oh, well, what. I mean, you're going to have Mandalorian, you know, before that as well. So, and I think yeah. Mandalorian, if if it's six episodes, just to double check the date, I think it rolls almost directly up to Rise of Skywalker, as in like if they do an episode a week, I think it finishes the week before Rise of Skywalker opens. So, yeah, it's, it, it's and then like no... we'll have resistance and it's just. Yeah, it's going to be a very busy sort of six or seven, sort of two month period, I think, where they're just going, hey, you know, we're taking a little break, but until then, we're going to slam you with. Star yeah. Wars until you and I mean, like, it. we've got Force Friday in October as well. And, like, from October onwards, we've got a huge, like, list of books coming out as well. So it's just going to be nonstop for the last three months of the year. Do you go for the, the figures or the, the Force Friday stuff? Do you sort of have a particular thing that you collect that um, you go after? Or Well, I've only ever been, like, because I've only been a fan since The Force Awakens, I've only ever had the one Force Friday. And I was anticipating buying a lot more stuff. I only ended up buying, like, I think three pops in a Lego set. But I okay. know, like, even just, looking at, even just looking at the books, I already know that I'm going to be buying a hell of a lot more <laughs> did you go a bit nuts at Did you go a bit nuts at Celebration or did you manage to sort no. of control, control yourself? Uh, again, much better than I thought. Like, I brought, I, I brought some Porg shoes. They were my big purchase. Mm. But, um, like, not because I've got... Um, a considerable amount of pops. Um, <laughs> what does what's a number? What's a throw me uh, throw a number at me? I think with Star Wars pops, I'm like twenty or twenty five at the moment. Oh, that's pretty good. And I just like I know, like with the Rise of Skywalker, I'm looking at like Ray, Finn, Poe, probably Janna, like at least probably five. Yeah. And then I'm hoping. Um, so in the trailer, we see Finn, Poe, and three PO on that little barge sort of thing. Oh yeah. My big hope is that that is a Lego set. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Because Hopefully I would, they can yeah. make the little scarf that Poe wears like a like a Lego little like a one that you can take off, like rather than just sort of drawn on his on his jumper. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that's going to be a Lego set. Although my wallet would probably appreciate it not being. <laughs> so you don't go for the figures or anything like that. Um, no, I've got like a few, but they're not something I. I'm really drawn to like the Lego and the pops are probably my big two. It's good to not have too many things. I've sort of got the black series. I sort of fell down <laughs> the black series hole a little bit. I'm not a completionist, but I did. I came back from celebration with a suitcase full of black series. Yeah. Well, um, like my problem is like, I don't know what their problem is, but they just can't do Po, right? Oh, he's shocking. He, I've got, I've got one of them. It's, it's, it's almost laughable, laughable I just how bad do it is. Yeah, no, it's 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 a running joke about how they how terrible Poe looks in Black Series. Yeah. Um, I'll be really curious to see what his Rise of Skywalker one is. It's I just can't believe that they looked at it and went, yeah, that looks good enough to put out. Well, um, like, if they do a good Poe for Rise of Skywalker in Black Series, I'll happily buy it. Yeah, I because think the... like he looks really good in that costume, so yeah, like, why not? let me buy a figure. <laughs> I'll get one too. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, because some of the new the, they sort of had something going. Oh, we've got some new sort of scanning tech or sculpting tech now so some of the newer ones that have just come out they like the padme is fantastic the lightness yes. is really great on hers and um the mace window is really good and the luke that they've done since um in his x-wing gear so the archive one he looks really good too so i think that they're they're getting better but it's yeah it's it's kind of i mean i think i got that po for about 10 bucks so i was like well <laughs> i'll get it for 10 bucks because it's yeah, hilarious why not? Yeah, because it's funny. I mean, like, it's Oscar Isaac. How can you mess up his face that How badly? can you make the most handsome man in the world look like that? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. But um, I think these, um, I seem to think that his, his smaller figure, like his little three and three quarter one, actually, the lightness is a bit better. But uh, yeah, look, I guess they just keep plugging away. That's the thing. Maybe they're just like, yeah, no, we're just saving it. We're going to save all our, save all our, our heat for the. Rise of Skywalker, and he's going to have his little matching gloves and his and his scarf. He's going to be sort of rugged outdoor Poe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just and like my thing is as well. Like I often find I can't like if I buy a Finn figure, I have to buy a Poe figure with it. Uh, like I struggle. Like I have to pair them when I buy stuff. Uh, Otherwise, it, like because that just feels incomplete to me. I'm just like I need certain characters together. <laughs> <laughs> You're even shipping them on your shelf. Like, yeah. You go here uh, and you go here. Because yep. it's hard enough that I um 
when I did the cover art for the Dale's episode last week, I had to photo badly <laughs> Photoshop them so Poe's arm was around Finn. I don't, people didn't even notice. I don't think. I think they just assumed that I was like, oh, those guys just that's how they stand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for people to go like, oh, geez, that you know, how'd you do? What'd you do that for? Or oh, somebody, you know, somebody gets their knickers in or not? But I think people just went, oh yeah, it seems entirely plausible that they would just be standing there. Oscar Isaac could have his arm around you know John Boyega without too much. Well, time. I mean, like I'm sure if they weren't. If they would, if the two of them were told just to like do what they want for a photo shoot, that's exactly what they would do. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. Yeah, um, uh, our buddy Steele from Steel Wars, he got to interview Oscar Isaac, and then Eric, who we were talking about before, he was sort of helping out with the sound and stuff, and he got to sort of walk, stand on the line while the actors came down. And yeah, it, Eric just said, Oscar Isaac is just so handsome, you can't even really look at him. It just, you yeah. just feel, and the closest Actually, I've ever. Yeah. yeah. Um. You. Yeah. When you asked me about like my best experience at Celebration, I totally forgot. Um. So after the Rise of Skywalker panel, I like full on booked it straight down to the Star Wars Sto- Star Wars show stage. Mm-hmm. Because like I knew they'd probably come out on that stage in a few hours' time, so I'm just like I'll hang out there and I, you know, see what happens. And I stayed there for a few hours and I missed lunch and was not feeling great. But I managed to get like right up in front of the stage, oh, like wow. directly looking at the couch. Nice. So I was like, I saw all the cast members come through, and it's like John Berger, Oscar Isaac, Daisy Ridley. They were all standing like two meters away from me. Wow. Well, we had um, uh, a couple of us were standing. We got there sort of late. We wandered past, and I think it was when John Berger was on, and uh, we were standing behind, sort of the stage so we oh, sort of yeah. had their backs to him but they're sort of turning around looking around but then um because we had these beanies on that i'd brought the red white the red ones that we had friends at home who, who could see us on the feed because we're just sort of right behind john Bayega's head in the background with these <laughs> bright red hats on that you couldn't miss but uh i'm sure if you sort of panned down they probably would have seen your red hair just sort of staying on the barrier like yeah, you're waiting for the like, Beatles to show up there's one shot where oscar isaac's using the t-shirt cannon oh yeah and I remember at that point I had my phone out taking a photo and it's like one of my favorite photos. But in that like bigger photo they've got of him, you can see like right in the corner my little translucent hand holding my <laughs> phone up. It's like I'm in the same photo as Oscar Isaac, that's enough. We're sharing the space. Yeah. Yeah. And he's they're very handsome. You, you just you, you can't it's like looking at the sun, you know, you don't Yeah, wanna, pretty much. You know, well that was the closest I ever had to that was I went to New York on holiday one time and I was in a shop and Jessica Alba was in there the actress and that you know that was sort of about 10 years ago peak jessica Alba. and i just remember going, yeah. she's so good looking i can't even look at her like i don't even like i've got badly how that i said was there with a friend of mine i said like that's bloody jessica Alba over there and i'm just like i can't even look at her she's too good looking it's just you know i'll just look away yeah <laughs> and i'm sure that's oscar isaac's the same uh, the same way um right so mandalorian where are you yeah where do you are you excited for, for that? Is it is it sort of your your bag? Your that sort of I mean, like you said, you've sort of you don't have the the, the Boba Fett Mandalorian kind of baggage that a lot of older fans have been in it for a long time have. Is it sort of as a concept? Is it something that, um, that you're like cool or like ah oh, more Star Wars? It wasn't initially because again, like my issue with Star Wars growing up was that to me it very much had that image of just being for boys and like had that image of Boba Fett. Yep. And it's it was just, very synonymous, wasn't it, for a lot yeah, of those? Yeah, and like to me, that's what Star Wars was for so long. And I think that kind of flows through to my um, sort of like thoughts on The Mandalorian. But then after seeing, um, at, after seeing parts of the panel, because I didn't see everything, mm-hmm. um, and seeing the photos and seeing the cast, it's definitely interesting me more. Yep. And like Pedro Pascal is amazing. Yeah, it's so it doesn't, doesn't hurt that Pedro Pascal's there, and yeah, uh, they got you know they got sort of a pretty colourful characters. I was in the panel for the Mandalorian, so we got to see the footage and the behind the scenes stuff, and yeah, it looks great. It looks you know expensive like Star Wars. It kind of yeah. visually feels like Rogue One, I think the way it's yeah, shot. definitely. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see. You know, it's it'll, it'll just be curious how much currency people put in it. You know, like the movies sort of live with you they become a part of your life you know what i mean like they like you know you sort of take them on and they're sort of part of the furniture it'll be curious to see whether something like this stays with it stays with you as, as a fan or whether you're just like oh yeah that's cool on to the next one you know they're kind of will they be as effective i suppose without movies 
Yeah, well, that, like, with resistance, that was kind of similar for me. Like, I went into that being like, well, is it going to stick? Is it something I'm going to enjoy? And it was a bit slow, but by the end of it, I was just like, no, this is definitely Star Wars. It fits in perfectly. It's adding to the story. Like, it's managed to fit in really, really well. Yeah, it was... um... I watched all, almost all of it on the plane over to Chicago because I'd, I'd sort of fallen fallen off it and watched a few episodes and we're like, hey, this is cool. It's a kid's show. I'm enjoying it. And thought, oh, look, I better watch it all. I might try and get to that resistance panel in Chicago. So I ended up you know, watching the last 14 episodes in a row or something. And yeah, the story really takes off as soon as it starts sort of intertwining with Force Awakens and the stuff that goes on there. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what they do next. I, you know, They're going to butt up against Last Jedi next, I assume. So yeah, it'll be cool to see what happens. Yeah, and it's just refreshing as a show as well to see so much diversity on screen. Like, they've very actively made sure yeah. that they're doing that. Yeah, for sure. The um, the Mandalorian cast looks quite diverse too, actually. They seem to yeah. have sort of consciously done that as well, um, which is cool. And we, we sort of spoke with Dale last week saying that that might be a good chance that you could put a gay character in with a minimal of fuss as well, where you're kind of starting a new universe from scratch as well and all new characters and you can just sort of, you know jump it in and and away you go but um if, if, if that sort of if that sort of happened would that sort of pique your interest more if they if they did that from the jump or oh, yeah. like, i mean i mean either way yeah it definitely would but then my issue has always been like if they have queer characters in other like shows or, or like shows or books or whatever that's great and i'll love those stories but to me it always just seems like including a queer character is too big of a risk for the Skywalker saga. And that just feels like, it feels really insincere because like including queer people shouldn't be a risk. Like it's like, don't sort of put them in the TV thing just because it feels safer. Like just put them in the movie. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't chicken out kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like queer pe- people are natural. Like to say it's more of a risk is just, yeah, it's not very, yeah. it's like in- saying, insincere sort of. Yeah, Exactly. I, look, I hope that they do too. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, a funny thing is I was just sort of uh, looking at your, you, you, you know, you did the little Twitter stalk and stuff when you have guests on and stuff. And yeah. I, I, you do a Brooklyn Nine-Nine podcast and we were, I was actually trying to expre- explain Brooklyn Nine-Nine to Dale last week. He didn't know yeah. what the hell I was talking about and I was talking about Captain Holt and things like that. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, he, he looked a bit sort of lost, like, what are you talking <laughs> talking about? But um, is that your sort of your, your, your current TV fave at the moment? I love, I love it. Um, yeah, like I actually got into it when it got cancelled. <laughs> like, this is my problem. Back, like, so just yeah. to keep you happy. Like, I, I did that with Parks and Recreation as well. Like, I started watching that, I think, like a week after it finished. Oh, but, I yeah, Parks I got into Brooklyn Nine-Nine because I always knew I would like it. But I was just like, no, no, I don't have time for it. And then, sure enough, I got into it and I, yeah, got, got fully drawn in. Are there many Brooklyn Nine Nine podcasts? I <laughs> um no, and like my one, we've sort of we've done a few episodes, but it's just like podcasts are like hard work, <laughs> yeah. and especially like I feel like because it's a TV show, it's a bit harder purely because like one, it isn't airing now, and there just isn't as much material. Yep, yep. So it's either like do you go back to the start, or you know, how yeah. do you do? You, how, yeah. Well, I did the. I do the the Peppa Pig podcast is sort of the other podcast I do with um, my buddy Matt and you know because we're both dads and we sit through a lot of Peppa Pig, um, <laughs> and that sort of you know that'll that'll go for as long as we want to do it basically because you know there's 250 episodes, oh, <laughs> yeah, they, they do 50 episodes a series and there's five series and they go back and we just went back to the start and it doesn't really there's no sort of linear plot or anything in Peppa Pig it doesn't really matter you can just sort of they're all pretty self contained but. Um, yeah, and they're all they're over in five minutes, so you can you knock out fifteen minutes talking about Peppa Pig pretty quickly. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and that's the thing, there were there isn't another Peppa Pig podcast, and that was sort of the reason we did it. It's like you know, throw a rock and you hear the Star Wars podcast. Yeah, but um, you know, at the same time, you know, doing a Star Wars. That was the thing. Like I started a Star Wars podcast, knowing full well that. Uh, there were thousands of it out there, but it was really because I listened to so many Star Wars podcasts and I was just like, wouldn't it be nice to be asked to be on a Star Wars podcast? You know, I'd like to talk about Star Wars. And that was sort of why I did it really. It was just because I'm going, well, there's no point waiting around for someone to ask you to be on a podcast. You might as well just do it yourself. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, and that's you know, pretty much take the how, reins. yeah, I ended up with mine because I was just like, like, I want to speak about Star Wars. 
so why not <laughs> yeah exactly and like, i'm so you know i'm just really chuffed that i did it and it just sort of led to to celebration and, and doing all of that and i think i would probably might have gone if i hadn't done the podcast but it certainly solidified me wanting to go um yeah it certainly it certainly is incentive to keep going on the podcast as well you know like every now and then it's sort of like ah. Oh, I've got to try and figure out, you know, especially when you have to get guests all the time. You're like, oh, I've got to try and find a guest and do this. And you're like, no, no, I've got to keep going because there'll be celebration next time. And, I, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, the, the, the podcast is going well. And, yeah, so yeah. it's always uh, incentive to do so. But um, thanks for being on. Um, no, thank you for having knew, me on. It's I been a joy. Be I knew you'd be good for Star Wars <laughs> chats and things. you always got interesting stuff going on on the old Twitters. Um so what's going on with the podcast? Next episode's going to drop soon? Yeah, um, so it should be out in the next day or so, depending on how it go with editing. It was our special Pride Month episode where um, we kind of just went through the canonically queer characters and then sort of statements that have been made by Ryan Johnson and JJ and Kathleen Kennedy and mm-hmm. then sort of just like our hopes for the future. So it was sort of an up and down yep. episode in terms of um, – our happiness and anger, we'll put it that way. <laughs> well, at least you, you know, if you, you express your disappointment and anger with things that don't go your way in Star Wars better than most. Yeah. Yeah, there's no use being mean and abusive. It doesn't <laughs> no. end well for anyone. No, not really. No, definitely not. Um, so just before we, we finally sort of sign off the show for good, what's the, you know, going forward to, to, to Star Wars into the future, like, uh, you've you sort of spoken about some of the things that you'd really like to see. Is there anything that you're sort of really hoping we'll get in the next, you know, five years or so that you haven't touched on yet? Um, I'm not really sure. I just, again, like more diversity in like multiple facets is ideal. And then sort of just, I, like I know a lot of people want stories like away from the Skywalker saga and whatnot, but I – personally just want to sit down with plenty of stories about like Ray Finn and Poe after this all happens or in between the movies. Like I just want sort of that comfort material. Yep. So, you want so I don't of... really mind what happens elsewhere. I just want that sort of stuff. <laughs> you just want to keep being fed more, more, more things. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds like a pretty I... uh, reasonable request. I, I can hope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So plug away, plug away all your wonderful things, Holly. Yeah. So I can be found on Twitter at underscore Holly tweets. And then my podcast, which I co-host with the lovely Manda the Ginger is Rebel Dispatch. And we can be found on iTunes and SoundCloud and on Twitter at underscore Rebel Dispatch. Awesome. And what's the name of the Brooklyn 991 while we're at it? Uh, It's kind, sober and fully dressed. A Brooklyn Nine Nine podcast. Um, I would say we're on temporary hiatus. We may be coming back. We may not. We'll just see how we go. Just download all the ones now, yeah, and then start a fan petition like Brooklyn Nine Nine to yeah. bring it back. So, you know, yeah, that'll work this... for us. <laughs> People power. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, thanks so much for being on. Um, you can find us at StarWarsSpeltOut dot com. It's got all our stuff, all the episodes. Um, all the merch stuff, if you want to get involved with that. Uh, we're starting to plan our merch for Anaheim. So if you've got any suggestions or ideas or things that you'd like to see, uh, let me know and I'll start looking into that. I've got 14 months to figure it out, so that's okay. And, um, yeah, thanks for keep listening. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Holly. Thank you. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, see ya. Thank you.